Hey peeps, today we're going to be talking about the Spirit of the Animals Oracle by Jody Bergsma, but we're also going to be discussing um, deepening into like exploring past lives in your tarot practice. If you feel called to look at past lives you may or may not have had uh, on your spiritual path, if you feel called to uh, explore that as part of your card work. So if you don't feel called to explore um, <coughs> past life work as part of your personal card work, then I would say you probably don't need to um, hold on to the end of this video because I am going to give some demo there. But I do want to show how well this deck works for clarifying and kind of fleshing out past life uh, impact in your current life experience. So I have never even done a full review of this deck on my channel because honestly, I was really, I'm just going to be straight up honest. And if I remember, I will post the unboxing video. Um, excuse me. I will include a link to the unboxing video in the description box below. But <laughs> at the time I had been really, really searching for a good spirit animal oracle that gave me better artwork than Colette Baron Reed's spirit animal oracle, uh, but still had that like intensity of um, deck soul, I guess we could say for lack of a better term on my part. And I was really, I had a lot of expectation for this deck because I do like Jody Bergsma's Spirit of the Wheel deck. And this deck really disappointed me at the time. Number one, the cards are simply too big. And it takes a lot for me to say that. You guys know that it takes a lot for me to say that. I don't say that lightly. I don't say that often because I have larger hands than most of you apparently. And um, I don't have the same problem that most people do with shuffling larger cards, such as say the blue angel size cardstock. So I will give you an example of, here's um, Billy Vampire Oracle by Blue Angel large oracle cards look at how much bigger this deck is than this like there's this 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 deck is simply too big like it's even awkward for me to hold this with my hand like this it's just not um the card stock is too big like if i could give them any advice not that they would care to ask me but if i could give them any advice it would be like guys you really need to reduce the size of this deck. It does not need to be this big. It's cumbersome, it's uncomfortable, and it's actually kind of painful. Like I'm someone who likes to shuffle like this and it actually hurts my hands to shuffle like that. So I would say um, I never did a review of this deck because when I first purchased it, I was really disappointed with it. And honestly, it went on a shelf and I was like, I don't want to gift it, but um. I do, I don't know how, you know, how much I'm feeling called to work with the deck. And I really didn't for a long time. And then finally I found Woodland Wardens, which like was a total game changer for me and saved my life as far as looking for a spirit animal Oracle deck. That deck is absolutely amazing. I have a full review of it in an unboxing and it's been on multiple lists on the channel for ways in which that deck is just, is just that deck is amazing balls i can't say enough good things about woodland wardens and so if you're looking for a spirit animal deck i think woodland wardens is the way to go but the reason why i'm making this video is because recently i was called to pull this deck forward to do some past life readings that have come up um, with clients and this deck is fucking balls with past life work. Like I cannot even, I, I, I'm going to show you some images in a second. It's like a warm and snuggly sweater day here, guys. So, but I'm trying to adjust the turtleneck. Do you guys ever have that with turtlenecks where it's like uncomfortable around your neck, even though the warmth feels good? Anyhow, maybe it's just a me thing. But I have found a new way to work with this deck that's really causing me to value the deck and to be like, I'm glad I didn't gift it. And I guess that I don't hate the deck as much as I thought I did. So this is kind of a review, but it's also uh, a demonstration for how you can use this deck for the specific purpose I found that it works very well for. So this is what the box looks like. It's published by US Game Systems, Spirit of the Animals Oracle by Jody Bergsma. There's 51 animal spirit cards, one personal choice card, 116 page illustrated guidebook, and there's a spreadsheet that you can use much like the spirit of the animals oracle deck. This is what the backing looks like. I love medicine wheel representation. So 
I'm totally on board for this. And this particular medicine wheel is the medicine wheel that I was taught in my shamanic practice. And so I'm down for the backing. I'm just very much against the card stock size. I'm, excuse me, the card size. It's just too much. So when you, here's the spread, which I, I don't use those, so I'll, I'll never be using that, but that's a great option if you do. Um, there's keywords, card re representation, and ways to work with the deck, if the deck's in shadow or if it's upright, etc. for you. So the guidebook's nice to reference. I don't use the guidebook in how I work with this deck, however. So as far as a spirit animal deck, I just was not feeling connected to it. There's too much going on written word wise at the bottom of the card for me. I know for some people who are beginners, having all of that written word form at the bottom of your car can can be a safety blanket in a way and i in no way uh, mean that um negatively uh, we need those those uh training wheels if you will when we first start working with anything any form of practice right it's good to have those helpful reminders to keep us feeling confident in how we're building especially in this case our intuitive muscles I have found that it's they're they're affirmational. So for instance, here's the swan with and the key word for swan is grace. You who glides across the waters of my soul, bring me your wisdom and light. Help me transform into elegance and grace. Inspire me with dignity and the spirit of beauty. It's almost more like affirmational keywords. And it's just too clunky for me when it comes to working with it for a spirit animal energy. I would have preferred swan and grace. You know, I don't need all that affirmational piece there. But if it floats your boat, you're going to love that. The fact that this deck offers that. Uh, it's distracting for me as a reader, especially someone who's very visual when I have all that written word that then is making me want to stop and read it. And then I just, it ends up getting clunky when it feels like I want to connect with the spirit animal for myself or my client that's coming through in regards to where they are on their journey um, or as a clarification within the tarot spread. So... You know, um, that's a that's a negative to me with this deck is all of the writing at the bottom of the cards. However, love that we don't have borders, and I love that the animal gets a nice large depiction. Which you know, I guess I have to say they're like the card stocks helpful for that, right? Um, someone posted recently on one of my videos because I was like, it's not matte, but it's not shiny, and they were like, yeah, you mean it's satin? So I guess this is satin card stock. <laughs> um, learn something new every day. Um, so I really, when I was trying to use it as I would a traditional or a typical spirit animal oracle deck for myself, it just wasn't working. Like I wasn't feeling called to what I was pulling for draws and I just wasn't feeling the sense of, um, connection that I had hoped to with this deck. I was honestly really disappointed and you know, especially we Torians, when we are like disappointed in something, we just are like, you know, kind of like, oh, yeah, get it away from me. I don't want to deal with that. Um, so I really just didn't connect with her. But recently, while I was doing a, a few of these past life readings, I felt like spirit animals, or what, what, what is it called? Spirit of the animals oracle um, was like, oh, no, I want to I want to come, I want to come forward. I want to work with them for this. And I was like, this is very interesting. Like typically past life, I don't go to, to spirit animal decks for this, but it worked really well. This is the personal choice card where you, you know, discover the spirit animal yourself. I'll show you a few more images and then I'm going to demonstrate how this deck has been so helpful with uh, past life readings. And I was like, what the heck spirit of the animals i i was like really cool and good with not liking you and now i'm starting to like you you're making me like you um so i've been a little sassy with this deck over the last week because i'm like what the heck is happening like you're you're actually proving to be really accurate even though it hurts my hands to shuffle you and i'm not using you at all in the way that i had planned or thought or felt i was going to work with with this deck um i do energy work uh, as far as in-person sessions go. Well, everything is energy. So I do energy work online as well, but I offer hands-on energy healing in person. And I like to have animal-based decks 
for those sessions because it's nice at the end of an energy session to draw a spirit animal card and just have that affirmation of an, an, an energetic being through the form of an animal that's supportive of you on your journey at this time, right? It's a really beautiful, beautiful thing. And so I'm always on the search for spirit animal decks for that purpose, for my in-person clients, but also for understanding where someone is on their journey and what animals are coming along to assist them from a spirit uh, perspective. So I'm gonna, we're going to talk about how this deck blew me out of the water. So let's say that we want to have an understanding of a past life that's currently impacting us in our present life. Now, of course, the first thing I want to say to you is if you're looking at time as nonlinear, it's not technically a past life because it's occurring simultaneously, right? But for, for, for purpose, you know, for the purpose of this reading, we're going to call it a past life. This is a sample reading, but if you feel like it applies to you, please feel free to go ahead and take what, uh, what works for you. Okay. So let's say that we want to have an understanding of this past life. I am working with, got to look at the box, the magical manga deck here. And the tarot cards that I've drawn to give me some insight here is the Eight of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands. I'm going to draw one other card, Four of Swords. So I can see that I didn't get to finish something in this life. And there's a lot of like red and orange and gold here. So in this particular life, I was working very hard. I had a very intern, deep internal focus on creating success around something for myself. So let's say I want some clarity on what did I not successfully complete in that life? Moose, wisdom here, clarifying that question for me and clarifying my queen of wands to the four of swords here. So again, I've got all that blue. So I was, I really was not able to successfully teach or pass on wisdom the way that I wanted to. See how the moose with the wisdom let me know right away what it was that I didn't get to successfully pass on. And I can see here that I'm doing some form of writing. So, so I was working in some teaching capacity. In what capacity? Was I working as a teacher where I didn't get to pass this on? Humpback whale singer. To me, uh, whale energy as a spirit animal energy is uh, associated to with the Akashic Records and with very ancient spiritual wisdom. So I would say I was obviously here holding a teaching space in my community around spirituality, uh, wisdom, religion, occult knowledge. Um, and I may have been of some renown, but it almost feels to me like off the beaten path, like my students had to find me in that past life. So again, if this resonates for you, feel free to take this reading as your own. But I wasn't able to finish fully sharing my wisdom in this life. So what was I not able to completely share? Raven, shaman, I wasn't able to fully share and pass on my gifts and the ability to see beyond the veil, to see beyond what is known. Another key word in this card is also magician. So I may have not been able to pass on or to finish creating a body of work around magical and ritual ability and craft and power as well. And so now I'm going to ask, how am I resolving that karmic thread in this life? And I have Hawk with messenger. So how am I resolving this karmic thread that was left unfinished in this previous life. I mean, it looks like I may have been killed or died unexpectedly and I wasn't able to finish the work that I felt I had been called into incarnation in that life to pass on and to share with others. So how this manifests in this life is that I act as a messenger from the other side for people and it's through embracing my role as messenger that I'm able to resolve the unfinished karmic thread from that past life. So do you see like how freaking clear this deck is on offering clarification for past life aspects of a reading? Like I can't even, I was like, oh my God. And it works so well with tarot in this way. So for me, this deck isn't really a spirit animal deck. I don't feel called to work with it when I'm doing um, shamanic Reiki with a client and I want to finish the energy of the session for them, right? I don't feel called to use this when someone says to me, what guides are with me on my path now? 
but I am going to keep coming back to this deck for past life karmic threads impacting the present life. It's amazing, right? I, I, that's why I think I'm going to title this video, video like, what the heck spirit of the animals oracle? Because you just blew me out of the water. I didn't realize I had this beautiful gem of a deck sitting in my collection. Um, in fact, was really feeling a lot of angst around this deck and it's actually amazing. But it's a very specific tool. And I've been talking a lot about that lately on the channel about how decks can be specific tools in our collection. And if we get to know them at that level where we can really honor that they're a very specific tool and not try to force them or ourselves to interact with them a certain way, we end up with this really beautifully full, fleshed out toolkit for our spiritual path and practice. So let me know what you guys think about Spirit of the Animals Oracle by Jody Bergsma. And if you guys have tried that working with this deck for past life readings, or if maybe you feel called to based on watching this reading. But as always, it's been wonderful to spend some time with you. And I am sending you so much love and many blessings. I'll see you in the next video.